Hello, history enthusiasts. Today, we're travelling back in time to the Middle Ages, a period often romanticised for its chivalry and castles. But hold your noses, because we're about to uncover the dirty truth about medieval hygiene. Forget our modern obsession with cleanliness. The Middle Ages had a very different relationship with hygiene. Imagine a world without flushing toilets, running water, or soap as we know it. That was the reality for most people in medieval times. From roughly the 5th to the 15th centuries, Europe experienced a period of significant cultural and technological change. But one thing that didn't change much was the approach to hygiene. Buckle up, because it's about to get a bit grimy. Now, before we judge too harshly, remember that life in the Middle Ages was tough. People lived in close quarters, often with their animals. Resources were scarce, and knowledge about germs and disease was limited. However, delving into their hygiene practices offers a fascinating glimpse into a world vastly different from our own. Let's grab our trowels and dig deeper into this smelly subject. In the medieval mind, cleanliness wasn't just about physical well-being, it was deeply intertwined with spiritual purity. The church, a powerful force in medieval life, played a significant role in shaping attitudes towards hygiene. They believed that cleanliness was next to godliness, but their interpretation differed from our modern understanding. While frequent bathing wasn't emphasised, the church stressed the importance of spiritual cleansing through prayer, confession and penance. Physical cleanliness was seen as secondary to the purity of the soul. This emphasis on spiritual over physical cleanliness had a lasting impact on medieval hygiene practices. Furthermore, some religious teachings associated excessive bathing with vanity and even sin. The elaborate bathhouses of the Roman Empire were long gone viewed as remnants of pagan decadence. Instead, people were encouraged to focus on their spiritual well-being rather than indulging in excessive bodily care. This is not to say that people never washed. They did, but not with the frequency or rigour we see today. Let's address the elephant in the room, or rather, the unwashed elephant in the room, bathing. Contrary to popular belief, people in the Middle Ages weren't completely averse to water. However, full-body immersion was a rare treat, often reserved for the wealthy or those with access to public bathhouses. For the majority, bathing involved a quick sponge bath using water, herbs and sometimes vinegar. They focused on washing their hands and faces, especially before meals, a practice considered both polite and practical. Water was precious, often hauled from wells or rivers, making frequent bathing a logistical challenge. Public bathhouses, while not as common as in Roman times, did exist in some cities. These establishments, often doubling as social hubs, offered a chance for people to mingle while getting relatively clean. However, the hygiene standards of these bathhouses were questionable at best with the same water often used by multiple bathers. As you can imagine, a dip in a medieval bathhouse might not have left you squeaky clean. Section 4. Hair today, gone tomorrow. Medieval barbers did more than just cut hair. Now, let's talk about hair, or rather, the lack thereof. In the Middle Ages, long, flowing locks weren't just a fashion statement. They were a potential health hazard. Head lice and other parasites were common, making short hair or even shaved heads a practical choice for many, especially men. This is where barbers came in. These multi-talented individuals were the medieval equivalent of doctors, dentists and hairstylists all rolled into one. In addition to cutting and shaving hair, barbers performed minor surgeries, pulled teeth, and even applied leeches, a common medical practice at the time. 
Imagine going to your barber for a haircut and ending up with a bloodletting. It might sound horrifying today, but in the Middle Ages, barbers played a vital role in maintaining health, however rudimentary their methods may seem now. They were the go-to source for all things hygiene and healthcare, highlighting the limited access to specialised medical professionals. Section 5. Say cheese, or maybe not. Medieval dental hygiene. Speaking of healthcare, let's not forget about dental hygiene, or the lack thereof. In the Middle Ages, sugar was a luxury, but that didn't mean people had pearly white smiles. Diets, high in starch and rough, unrefined foods took their toll on teeth, leading to decay and loss. Toothbrushes, as we know them, didn't exist. People used frayed twigs, rough cloths, or even their fingers to clean their teeth. Mouthwash, often made with herbs and vinegar, was used to freshen breath and, hopefully, kill some germs. Needless to say, dental care in the Middle Ages was not for the faint of heart. Toothaches were common and excruciating often treated with home remedies or, if you were lucky, a visit to the barber-surgeon. Extractions, performed without anaesthesia, were a painful last resort. It's no wonder that tooth loss was widespread, serving as a stark reminder of the challenges of maintaining oral hygiene in the medieval world.